Industrial sabotage is widely seen as one of the most difficult and frustrating mission types, in no small part due to the caretaker fight. With Season 3 putting the mission into deep dives and assignments, more industrial sabotage lobbies are present and suffering than ever. This build is my answer to the mission type, as it makes it incredibly safe and easy to deal with the caretaker. It also has the side effect of being great on missions that aren't industrial sabotage. In the background, you'll be seeing Hazard 5 gameplay of me soloing the caretaker without Bosco. It's set to 4 player scaling, meaning you're essentially watching me fight the boss as if there were 3 other downed players in the lobby. The fight ends up being rather long, slow, and straight up boring as a result. The vent and IHP are designed for 4 players, not 1. Due to this build's extreme efficacy at dealing with everything but the eyes, I'm also in very little real danger. As may be evident by the background footage, this build uses the Engineer class with the Stubby's Turret EM Discharge, or EMD for short, as their primary. This is an unstable overclock which provides extremely potent area of effect damage upon shooting a turret. Ideal for defending the hacking drone, or, as demonstrated, taking care of the caretaker's vents. In Tier 1, I run upgraded capacitors. The increased electrocution chance is both useful for the base gun and also increases the chance to proc EMD. In Tier 2, I run Recoil Dampener. For typical EMD builds, I'd prefer high-capacity magazines, but in this case, the reduced recoil helps us hit the turrets from a safe distance while they're on top of the caretaker. In Tier 3, I take expanded ammo bags, because the stubby's main focus isn't damage output in this build. In Tier 4, I take hollow point bullets, because the caretaker can't be electrocuted, but its eye counts as a weak point. In Tier 5, I run Magazine Capacity Tweak to improve the spammability of our stubby and EMD by extension. Our secondary is Hyper Propellant, an unstable overclock for the personal grenade launcher which exchanges its AoE for huge single target damage. In Tier 1 and 2, ammo is the only choice that makes sense as a result. In Tier 3, we take Incendiary Compound, which is bugged and doesn't actually reduce Hyper Prop's damage output. Furthermore, this lets us ignite any robot, outside of Nemesis, Prospectors, and the Caretaker, in just a single shot, insta-killing them. This is incredible for taking care of the dangerous tentacles, butch robots, and turrets that the Caretaker spawns. Without them, its only damaging attack is the electricity at its base and phase bombs, which are fairly straightforward to dodge, granting nothing else is attacking you. In Tier 4, we take Stun, as Homebrew Explosive occasionally means we miss one-shot ignition, despite increasing damage on average. Tier 5 Spiker Grenade just in further increases single target damage, since neither of the other options make much sense. The rest of the build is pretty standard. Double turrets to proc EMD, quick deploy for better movement flexibility, stun to help with crowd control, and defender system because it's better. Build your plats and armor as you prefer, these are the builds I take, and perks are the standard resupplier, born ready, vampire, dash, and field medic or iron will. I take Shredder Nades for Industrial Sabotage, as they're incredibly convenient for dealing with enemy Shredders. The build playstyle during the Caretaker fight, as you can see in the footage, is to place the turrets on top of the Caretaker's head as soon as the fight starts. This will allow the EMD effect to hit all four vents at once and hit the eye as well. This has the side effect of enabling any drillers who might want to see four of the vents. Keep yourself up high, using platforms or terrain, to make it easier to hit the tentacles as well as your turrets, as if you go too low, the turrets may be blocked from your view by the caretaker. At the start of each phase transition, use your hyperprop extremely liberally to make quick work of any patrol bots, tentacles, or turrets which may spawn. Save most of your hyperprop ammo for this, rather than damaging the eye. Make sure you have hyperprop ammo every time there's a phase transition as well. Industrial Sabotage tends to provide copious amounts of nitro, so it may be a good idea to resupply before each phase. In a lobby with other players, you can usually let your teammates deal with the eyes while taking care of the dangerous parts of the fight yourself this way. Tap your turrets or the eye if there are no present threats remaining on the map. With that, you should have the tools to breeze through any sabotage mission, in vanilla hazards at least. If any of this video was helpful, or at least interesting to you, consider liking and subscribing to encourage more similar content. An uncut version of this fight can be found in the description if you would like. I'll leave you to watch the rest of this video undisturbed. Happy mining out there, Rocking Stone.